Welcome everyone to the next video in the series on Komodo Dragon's openings. We are now going to have a look at 1e4 and now c5 and 1e5. Let's have a look. So c5, what does Komodo Dragon want? It wants two knight f3. Um, I did ask it uh, what did it like against the, uh, the solid Alapin. Uh, as it turned out, uh, uh, the line which, uh, which I played as a professional uh, seems to be the best, which... Uh, was kind of my feeling too I have to say uh, just two knight f6 and um, well this is uh, one of the uh, uh, the main lines I've had it a number of times in uh, in my games castles and then bishop e6 neutralizing all white's play um, yeah white can do uh, try a few more things rook d8 knight c3 and then d5 and then this lovely move queen d4 hitting a7 and h8 but in actual fact, it's uh, just a way, really, of uh, leading to uh, to an exchange of queens. And uh, I think actually a, a correspondence game here uh, ended up in a win for white. But uh, that seems a little bit unlikely. And Komodo just thinks that it's uh, absolutely equal. 0 0.16 for white. So nothing amazing. Um, it's uh, uh, another interesting uh, little idea is uh, the Sicilian wing gambit, which uh, might be due for a, a bit of a renaissance because it was recommended by uh, Ginger GM, Simon Williams and Richard Palliser in an excellent book on uh, 1E4 gambit. So uh, you never know. Um, Komodo's not actually too impressed with the, uh, with the wing gambit and after takes knight f3, um, then it wants to play knight f6, which is quite uh, unusual. And uh, after e5, knight d5, a3, e6, takes takes considers that black has a, a 0.41 advantage here there's a few more moves and uh, we follow a um a, a correspondence game for a while knight d e7 knight c2 a5 takes takes bishop a3 but to be honest you know um this doesn't look uh, so bad for white definitely the uh, the sort of unclear chances that you uh, you might expect with um with uh, with the wing gambit um, there is also something on the Mora Gambit, but we'll deal with that in a later video because uh, it, uh, I can group it together with another type of opening. But uh, there is actually some very interesting stuff on the, uh, the Mora Gambit. Well, after Knight F3, um, actually Komodo Dragon wants the Nidorf. It really considers that this is the, uh, the best line for, uh, for black against the Nidorf, uh, against the Sicilian rather. Um, strange, slightly strange move order, but we end up uh, the same. And now actually... Um, uh, Komodo Dragon considers that uh, either f3 or bishop e3 um, are the best moves here, and they often transpose into each other. I mean, basically, you know, in the course of the analysis, Komodo was sort of oscillating between them. And uh, once again, it's to be honest, it's the uh, um, if you'd asked me during my professional career, you know, what are White's best moves in this position, I would have said exactly the same. So uh, not uh, too surprising to me in any case. Um, so after a uh, Komodo's main line is f3 and then e5, it always wants these e5 lines. It's much keener on these than uh, than anything to do with e6. Actually, if you force uh, Komodo to play uh, e6, give it a little bit of a chance and it'll play uh, e5 on the next move. So uh, it really likes these um, e5 systems. So after uh, f3, e5, knight b3, bishop e6, we follow um, a lot of Grandmaster games and a lot of correspondence games as well. Um, Komodo is not really for the uh, queenside castling, goes for kingside castling. And then, um, yeah, always a big discussion about how to put the uh, queenside pawns. Should black play a5 or not? Um, b6 is a sort of a compromise. It stops uh, white from playing this move knight a5, but doesn't concede control of the uh, b5 square. Rook e8, a5, b3 and h3. And uh, yeah, this is a correspondence game uh, that ended in a draw. And uh, here Komodo recommends actually a pawn sacrifice, h4, and then knight h5. And black's got some, uh, some compensation on the dark squares here uh, to, uh, to compensate for the, uh, for the rook's pawn. I mean, once again, a very common theme in, um, in engine play, uh, dealt with at length in uh, both Game Changer and the Silicon Road to, uh, to chess improvement. That, um, you know, what's the beauty of attacking with a rook's pawn? It's uh, really not a very important pawn. So even if you lose it, um, it's not a drama. And, uh, well, the time that uh, the, the opponent spends capturing it can often, lee, uh, often be uh, profitably turned into uh, some activity. And here we see, well, you know, the activity that black has got, knight on h5, bishop on h6, possibilities of e4 to e3. So quite an unclear position. Uh, Komodo gives it an evaluation of 0 0.40. 
but um, yeah I mean basically a very unclear position there um, yeah I mean some other interesting things after bishop e3 um, well knight g4 actually a move that uh, I was one of the first people to play this uh, against uh, John Nunn in uh, Hastings back in I don't know 96 or something like that um, and uh, um, yeah still a very dangerous move I mean Gary Kasparov took it up and uh, played some great games against Vishyanand. Um nowadays basically thought to be maybe a small advantage for white but again nothing too uh, too amazing um, this is uh, Komodo's main line which follows uh, a game between Sam Shankland and uh, Salem in Prague 2022 so yeah you see it's quite uh, topical and here uh, instead of rook c8 as Salem played um, Komodo Dragon wants uh, wants this castles castles this slightly mysterious move rook b1 anticipating queen b6 I guess maybe looking for knight d5 without allowing the pawn on b2 uh, to be hanging uh, rook c8 takes takes bishop d3 Komodo thinks it's a slight advantage, 0 0.40 for white, but yeah, doesn't look that amazing, uh, I have to say. Will be a slight advantage, but uh, um, you'd expect black to be able to uh, to hold this. So I think knight g4 still holding out uh, very well. e6 is uh, Kasparov's favourite, but uh, incredibly uh, risky, really. And uh, Komodo's main line um, is f3, b5, queen d2, b4. Um, yeah, it's a general rule of thumb, uh, rule of thumb that I learned from uh, from Bobby Fisher that uh, if you play b5, if white doesn't prevent it with a3, then b4 straight away. That's the key. So um, knight a4, knight d7, castles queen a5, b3, bishop b7, a3, queen c7, a b. So black gives up the um, uh, the pawn on b4, wastes a little bit of time with the queen, but yeah, black's uh, white's king is a little bit exposed, and that knight's on a4 as well, a little bit out of play. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is tremendously sharp. And here Komodo, instead of uh, bishop g3, which was played in a game in uh, 2021, it wants bishop c4. And this is a total mess, I have to say. Um, uh, I'll just give you the, the Komodo dragon line just so that you can see. Takes, takes. Bishop d6, knight b3, castles knight a5. It's quite bizarre, really, why it's not even getting any sort of kingside attack uh, going, which is you know normally what you do in this line as white. But actually it's just, um, you know, picked up on... Uh, picked up all the stuff that black's thrown at white on the queen side and just tried to, to transform this into a huge queen side advantage and uh, yeah this this carries on uh, throughout the game actually knight c5 knight takes a6 king b2 e5 and uh, yeah i mean this is a total mess black's got the the king side and some center um, also this past e pawn but look at those white pawns on the queen side komodo gives it an evaluation of uh, 0.47 but we end up in this position which uh, I find uh, frankly unfathomable. So uh, um, yeah, I mean, really interesting and maybe uh, quite an interesting novelty, this uh, bishop c4 that uh, Komodo is uh, recommending. But uh, these lines with e6, very, very risky. I mean, uh, um, a Komodo dragon always wants to play uh, knight off lines with, uh, with e5 and uh, well, that's much more solid. Um, other Sicilian variations, well, for example, after e6, then again, open Sicilian, that's what um, uh, Komodo wants. And uh, for example, knight f6 is what Komodo wants um, uh, when you leave it to its own devices and let it analyze for a long period of time. And um, yeah, a lot of um, a lot of games played in this uh, recently. And uh, this is the line that Komodo Dragon wants. It's also been played at uh, GM level an awful lot. Takes, takes. You can't uh, take the pawn because uh, c4 would be an annoying pin. But you go queen c6, f3, c4, queen d4, and those pawns get swapped off, and we get this sort of ending. And uh, well, white should be a little bit better in this position. Uh, um, actually, Komodo even gives it 0 0.73, which is quite significant. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's uh, it's that much really. But um, but definitely a small advantage for uh, for white there. So that's quite interesting. I mean, if we just, uh, that's the Sicilian, there's uh, a few more lines, but uh, I mean, that's quite a nice little uh, overview of it. So let's move on to uh, 1 e5 now. Um, now, one thing you can't forget is the King's Gambit. What does Komodo Dragon want to do against the King's Gambit? Funnily enough, at uh, low depths, um, immediately, sorry, after f4, e takes f4, knight f3, Komodo wants to play knight f6. Uh, which has been played by quite a few good players. I think Michael Adams has played this as well. Um, but in the end, uh, it always comes back to Bobby Fischer's idea of d6. Um, d4, g5, 
h4 g4 knight g1 queen f6 and um yeah there's one quite uh, important game that was played in this joe gallagher big uh, king's indian exponent against glen fleer and uh, komodo follows this for a while uh, bishop h6 covering the pawn f4 queen d2 hitting it uh, if the pawn advances then the, the bishop on h6 is hanging we go knight c6 to hit the pawn on d4 if you take on f4 then d4 will be hanging knight d5 king d8 um, so the kings had to move to defend the c7 pawn but we're threatening a6 the knight's defending the uh, the pawn on d4 for now but yeah uh, once it's chased back then it won't and after d5 instead of knight e5 as uh, uh, Glenn Fleer played against Joe Gallagher um, uh, Komodo wants to play a6 knight c3 knight e5 knight f4 g3 uh, that actually means that we're transposing back into uh, more or less into the game um, although now I come to think of it uh, um uh joe took the opportunity to put the knight on d4 uh, in this game rather than on c3 so queen e3 knight 7 g6 knight c2 knight f4 knight f4 knight g6 and well it's pretty fraught for um uh, for white um after knight here takes takes bishop f2 and f5 black is better i mean uh, komodo gives an evaluation of minus 0.63 but uh, um, which is not winning, but uh, it is definitely better for black. Um, so um, yeah, d6, it looks like Bobby Fischer was right after all, uh, certainly according to the engines. So uh, after knight f3, knight c6, um, well, we could have a look, a little look at the Petrov. Um, what does Komodo Dragon want to do against the Petrov? Um, yeah, fresh in our mind, of course, from the World Championships. Um, D4 is what Komodo Dragon wants to do. It's uh, Knight takes C5 is uh, the choice at lower depths, slightly lower depths, 90,000 million nodes. But uh, once you start getting higher uh, than that, which is quite a lot, then D4 kicks in. Um, and the main line is um, Knight takes C4, Bishop D3, D5, Knight takes C5, and then Knight C3. Uh, takes, takes, castles, castles. Knight d7, rook e1, c5, queen f3. And uh, funnily enough, this uh, was played by Jan Nepomniachtchi as white um, against uh, Dominguez Perez in Bucharest 2022. Um, and uh, that ended in a, uh, in a draw. He, um, and uh, yeah, c4, bishop f5, takes bishop g5, clever move, but bishop b7, bishop b3, bishop c5. And now uh, there's a game, uh, Abramian against uh, Zat 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 Zatonsky, uh, St. Louis 2022. Sorry, Anna, uh, I'm horrifically um, uh, mangling your name there. Um, and uh, Bishop d4 is a novelty from, uh, from Komodo Dragon. Claims a slight advantage for white, 0 0.38 after this position. Yeah, it's sort of position actually that could uh, turn quite nasty for black if black doesn't quite uh, deal with uh, any kingside play. But in principle, uh, at the highest level, should be, uh, should be drawn. But uh, yeah, quite interesting uh, that uh, 3d4 is uh, Komodo's main choice there. Um, back to uh, knight c6, where we've looked uh, bishop b5, no point in looking at the, uh, at the Berlin again. Um, d4, I mean, none of the engines want to play Gary's uh, interesting ideas that he came up with in the 1990s with uh, knight takes c6 and e5. They all want to play the boring line with knight c3, bishop b4 takes bishop d3. Has also been tried by a lot of elite players, but none of them have ever really met, managed to make much of it. And uh, Komodo's lines are also not so interesting there, just a small advantage, 0.13. Uh, the Italian game is quite interesting. Um, Komodo wants to play knight f6 in this position and then d3. Um, knight g5, Komodo is not at all impressed with this line. Actually considers a lot of very sharp ideas. Eventually uh, goes for something a little bit more sober. Takes, takes. Knight d5, this is also what um, Alpha Zero did as black. But uh, here Alpha Zero wanted to play knight f4, which to be honest is, uh, I consider to be a pretty good line. But um, just uh, bishop d6, knight c3, castles, bishop e2, queen c7, d3, f5 from Komodo. And um, well, knight d2 has been played uh, in a previous game. Castles was uh, uh, Komodo's idea. Um, leads to some sharp play. Um, here after bishop h2 and bishop b5 takes there. It's an extra pawn, um, but uh, the white king is rather exposed. This knight on a5 is not super, 
but uh, Black's, Black's got plenty of uh, of play really and uh, Komodo considers this to be 0 0.07 so yeah virtually equal basically. So d3 the Italian game and uh, yeah again we follow uh, mainline theory for quite a while here. Uh, the line that Komodo Dragon likes um, in actual fact it spends a long time looking at uh, something that Magnus Carlsen did against Jan de Pomniacci in the uh, uh, I think it was the last game of that uh, of that World Championship match to play a very early bishop a7. Uh, but in the end it plumps for castles, h3, h6, bishop b5, bishop a7, knight d2, knight e7. Uh, this uh, plan of regrouping the knight round to g6, it's uh, well become uh, orthodoxy uh, nowadays. It, I mean, I don't think it was uh, so well known in the old days. Certainly when um, Josip Dorfman, uh, the great Russian trainer, showed this to me, um, actually, when we were discussing our own game, which was completely different, but he showed me this idea um, back in Cannes in 94 or 95, and uh, I'd never seen it before then. But uh, now it's played in, in virtually every one of these sort of Lopez or Italian game positions. But um, uh, yeah, knight f1 takes takes d5, e5, knight e4. And then there was a, a correspondence game with bishop d3 here, and Komodo Dragon wants to play knight g3. Um, which is fair enough. I mean, it uh, leads to uh, a slightly better position for white. But again, you know, in all these things, black always seems to have counterplay. And this move, bishop h3, takes queen f3. Queen takes there, even a pawn up, but we get ours back. But then this move, bishop d4, is the key point. Uh, defending the pawn on g7, and after rook takes d4, is gh. And, uh, well, white gets the pawn back like this, but you can imagine... This is going to be heading for a draw pretty soon. I suppose white's got any advantage that's uh, going. Go Komodo Dragon gives it 0 0.26, but uh, you would expect this to uh, to end in a draw. So, yeah, I mean, that's quite uh, interesting. As you can see, e5 is uh, really pretty solid um, with the uh, either the, the, uh, the Petrov or a two knight c6. Obviously, the Berlin against uh, three bishop b5. Or um, um, yeah, this sort of play against the um, uh, the Italian game, and against uh, with c5, yeah, Komodo Dragon considers the the Nidorf to be the best, which I think is pretty much the orthodoxy of uh, most engines uh, nowadays. So uh, well done, Michel. That was uh, quite an, an amazing thing to have uh, to have thought of um, uh, all those years ago in the 1940s. So, um, uh, yeah, that was uh, E4 main lines, E5 and C5. Uh, in the next uh, video, we are going to be having a look at E4 side lines, uh, the Alakin and also the Scandinavian. Let's see what Komodo Dragon has got in store for us there.